Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we introduced the network operation class to kind of cover our loading success and failure cases. We even introduced a bit of functional programming here with a couple of these different functions uh, that work really nicely inside of Kotlin and Compose. If you missed it, I'd recommend checking it out so you're all caught up. And in today's episode here, we're going to implement our all quotes screen here, which as you can see in the emulator is, uh, you know, has a list of the quotes that we want to display. There is an API that we're going to hit to kind of get all this data and then we will display it right now. I'm kind of just faking that data, uh, not really handling a bunch of interactions and all that stuff, but you kind of get the idea of what the screen will look like. So as we get started here, smash the like button, subscribe if you're brand new to help me out. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So. Off camera, I've uh, gone ahead and created this single quote list item, which as you'd imagine on the emulator, you're seeing multiple of those. But basically the idea is we wanna create, you know, a composable per row, basically, you know, a view holder in a recycler view, you know, if you're coming from that XML layout structure. Uh, I would love to do it live, but for some reason, I've been having all these render issues here, uh, you know, with the previews and such. So sorry about that. And I figured we'll just kind of talk about the uh, composable afterwards. So we have a column here, pretty straightforward. So as we could see, each one of these items here has, uh, you know, a column nature to it. And then at a high level here, we have a text uh, element, and then we have a row underneath it. Uh, and and then that row obviously has content in it. So a couple of highlights here: the column, the background is purple. We have the shape set to a large material theme shape, and then the cliff as well, so that none of the other children uh, draw outside of the bounds of this parent. This text here is really just gonna be displaying our quote itself here uh, with a little bit of styling, nothing too fancy there. Uh, whereas this text down here is going to be uh, talking or displaying about our author. I don't know if there's much else to talk about here. The row is a little bit of background color to make it appear as that black bar at the bottom. We then have an icon here that is dynamic. We can see in some of these cells, uh, the heart is filled in. Otherwise, the heart is uh, kind of an outline figure. And that really just means if that quote is a favorite of yours or the users or not. And that's about it here. We do have a preview here that I built out. Hopefully, if you pull the project down, uh, it will work for you and, and all that good stuff. But uh, otherwise here, we can go ahead and rerun this so we can get maybe just one element on screen. And as we flip over here, we see just one element and we see it does not look nearly as pretty. It goes completely edge to edge. It starts right at the bottom of that little navigation header. Uh, so, you know, we, we do need a little bit of help here to kind of clean this stuff up. Basically inside of our when statement, when we are selected, when we're in the all quotes section, then we're just going to go ahead and display this item. That's where it's coming from. And uh, if you've been with this series so far, you'll know that when we hit the daily quote, we had the daily quote screen and that handles all of the display of this main page here that we see. So we're gonna do something similar here with our uh, all quotes screen uh, to display all the information. But first, we're gonna to have to go ahead and do a couple things to get ready for that. Uh, the first one of which here is we're gonna to have to create a little bit more information inside of our state. So let's just leave this as uh, all quotes. This is going to be a network operation of a list of quotes. We're going to go ahead and start that as a network operation dot loading because of course we want to be in the loading state when the app boots up inside of our main activity view model where we have basically all the functionality right we have the fetching of the quote of the day selecting a particular page we can go ahead and say fetch all quotes as you would imagine we're going to set this function equal to the view model scope dot launch because i like that syntax most and then here we're going to have to go ahead and you know uh, fetch quotes and update state, right? But we don't have a, a way to fetch quotes here. For that, we're going to have to go back to this documentation here to actually kind of see uh, what it all looks like. I know the response here looks like an array of, uh, you know, just quote objects, which is very nice, but we need some path information and whatnot. I do believe, yep, it's just HTTP end quotes API slash quotes. And we're already using the slash today one. So if we take a look inside of our quote repository here, uh, we could probably create a function that looks pretty similar. And so the first thing we'll need to do is go into our quote service here and uh, something like this, create a whole nother endpoint. Instead of today, uh, it was called quotes. And then we're just gonna say get all quotes. And as well, it'll actually be a response of a list of network quotes. I think it's quite odd that the uh, quote of the day comes back in an array, but you know, whatever, I didn't make the endpoint. I'm just going to go ahead and create a function here 
to get all of our quotes. I'm just gonna copy this because this is gonna be very similar. So in this case here, we were taking simply just one quote and mapping it down into a domain quote, right? This was our network quote that we were getting. We were stuffing that into our uh, quote mapper to convert it from network to domain information. But in this case here, we're gonna have to go ahead and do something a little bit different. So we will say body, uh, and then we will use map, and then we will say our quote mapper dot build from it, because that is what will be passed in. Might need to, yep, save that last parentheses, and then that is it, right? So our body here is going to have the list of network quotes, and then we're going to want to convert them into a list of just domain quotes, and we do so by using our mapper. Wonderful. So we have our function here that we can go ahead and use. If we go over to our view model, we're going to do something very similar here except instead of quote of the day, it's going to be our all quotes. And then this will say um, all quotes as well. And instead it's going to say get all quotes. So we're then going to do the same process, right? We're gonna update our state to be in the loading state uh, for the all quotes variable. And then we're going to set it to whatever we get back from the endpoint. So this function is very much ready to go. Once you kind of have one network call in place with you know some good practice, you kind of get a bunch of other ones for free. And let's see, we're gonna go ahead and add this in to our perform on lifecycle. So not only when the app boots up, uh, are we going to be kept, uh, fetching the quote of the day, but we're also going to then be fetching all of the quotes, which is great. So we're doing a bunch of our networking up front uh, as we should. Hey, so now we'll have our information kind of, you know, fetching asynchronously for us. And then otherwise what we're gonna wanna do here is add in our all quotes screen. We're gonna wanna provide it the app state dot all quotes. Yeah, so we'll take these two parameters, right? We're gonna have on favorite clicked because we wanna bubble up anytime uh, a, a quote was clicked. And then our all quotes operation, which is gonna hand handle uh, displaying all of our information. Here. So we're gonna name it all quotes op uh, operation. It will be that network operation of a list of quotes. And then the other one was on fav on favorite clicked, taking in the quote that was clicked, and then we're not going to take anything back. And uh, that is about it. So we should be ready here to go ahead and create our list. Uh, however, we have our all quotes operation dot on success. And then we have our, nope, not on success again, but our on loading, and then our on failure. So in all these different branches here, we can go ahead and do something that we want, which is fantastic, really gives us a lot of flexibility and such. And I think to start, we're really just gonna go ahead and display the, um, the success state, and, and then maybe we'll get into the failure state later, because we just might need, might need to build a different UI. So let's go ahead and create a composable down here. Um, all quotes. I don't know, display, sure. And then we're going to be displaying the list of quotes here, which is going to be a list of our quotes. And we are going to need that on favorite clicked as well, because this is where um, you know that, that stuff is happening. Inside of our own success block here, we can just simply call the all quotes display, the quotes being it, and the on favorite clicked being the one from the parameter uh, sent into the function, and then we are basically ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close that to move this function up a tiny bit. And we're gonna go ahead and implement our lazy column here uh, to just go ahead and iterate over all of our items in the list. So we're gonna call items here. We're going to use the one, uh, no, nope, it's a different one. That is this one, uh, where then we can declare what the items are, uh, which will be quotes. We then need to declare what our key is. So for every single quote that is passed in, we need a unique way of identifying it. I'm just gonna simply call hash code on it because I think that's the best for the time being. And then afterwards, we're just gonna have this scope here where we can then go ahead and build, uh, you know, whatever UI we want given the data that, you know, uh, this list is providing us. So because we already have that single quote list item built out, we have our quote here, which will be it. So I'm just gonna leave it as is there. And then uh, we have, what is the other one? On favorite clicked is going to then just be. So now we have this information here. Uh, realistically, I mean, we're only handling the success case at the moment, but realistically, we should probably have enough to give this a run and see what happens. And coming back to life here, we're gonna flip over to the all quotes screen and boom, uh, 
that like that's not bad at all right i mean like it's bad it doesn't look good uh but we we are fetching quotes we're hitting an api we're doing all that good stuff and we are displaying it on screen what's bad about it is the way that it is displayed uh, but you can go over here and change a couple attributes inside of the lazy column and we'll fix that up very very quickly so i'm looking for the uh, vertical arrangement we're going to set that equal to the arrangement spaced by 16.dp. I believe this actually puts 16dp in between each individual element. And then our content padding here will take in a padding values. Uh, and let's see, this will take in horizontal to say 16.dp. And then we're going to do vertical. I like doing a bit more so that it's quite obvious. We'll say 48dp. If it's confusing, I think we'll go ahead and rerun it and talk about it in a second. So flipping back over here, now we see there's a lot more spacing, right? And if we notice, it might be difficult to see because the colors are kind of similar, but in between each item is a consistent 16 DP. And that's wonderful. That is controlled by our vertical arrangement here, spaced by 16 DP. So that is lovely that we have just very easy, simple control over that. If this was a lazy row, this would be the other way with the horizontal arrangement, and you can kind of do the exact same thing. But for uh, a list uh, in the lazy column, we're obviously going to have the vertical arrangement. And then our content padding here is a little bit more, I don't know, a, a, a little different, right? We have a horizontal padding of 16 dp, which is pretty straightforward in the sense that it's going to go ahead and put 16 dp on either side of the content. Uh, so that's how we get it pushed away from the edges, which is exactly what we would want. And then our vertical um, content padding here is basically on the entire size of the list. So if you notice at the very top here, there's a much bigger gap than there, are, than there is on the sides or in between each item. And that's quite wonderful because in my opinion, I like knowing where the top of the list is and the bottom of the list is. So I always want to make a little bit bigger of a space at the top and at the bottom of the list. And that is what this vertical attribute is allowing us to do inside of the content padding field. So if we were able to fling all the way to the bottom, we'll see the same, that there's a little bit more room in the uh, at, at the bottom of this view as well. So we're basically kind of manipulating what the view is in which this whole thing can scroll. And yeah, folks, that's about it, right? To get this up and running pretty quickly, once we had this UI element, this single quote list item, it really wasn't that difficult, right? That, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the difficult part. That's why we love Compose. Just build that one UI element and then you can just reuse it everywhere you need to. Um, the beauty of pulling this all quotes screen together so so quickly was because we already had a good foundation, a good layer for making network calls, handling different responses, all that good stuff. There's definitely a little bit more work to do here inside of our on loading and off, on failure states, but to be honest, we could do whatever we want in there. And, and the way this code is designed, right, you can just call a different composable inside of here, composable you know, loading, and then boom, you're gonna go ahead and just display whatever you want in the loading state. So maybe we'll go ahead and do that as a little bit of extra credit in this uh, <laughs> in this video. But um, yeah, if you made it this far, really appreciate a like, really appreciate subscribing if you are brand new. Stick around if you want a little bit more extra credit to handle this loading state. Yeah, and I'll catch you in the next one otherwise. Quite simply for our loading state, I think we're just gonna put in that circular progress indicator here uh, just to kind of, you know, make it quite a, quite obvious to the user what uh, that something is going on. Uh, I don't know what the default, or I don't remember what the defaults are here. Uh, so we're just gonna go with maybe fill max size. Uh, yeah, so then the color is going to be, let's set that equal to our teal, which is kind of our accent-y color. Um, and so then let's also put a little bit of a delay inside of our, uh, inside of our repository that works as well. Actually, no, let's go inside the view model because that's kind of where we've been doing it. Um, so we'll put in a little delay here of 1500, maybe we'll make it 2500 because I got to navigate from one page to the next here, but that should set off our loading state pretty easily. Oh boy. Okay. That's quite big. That's quite big. Uh, let's make that a little bit smaller. Okay. So that's a lot better as far as size goes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and not do fill max size, but instead we're going to just do like maybe size of Let's just go 50 dp. Let's see how that is. And um, how can I get this thing aligned to where we want it to be? I think what we're going to have to do here is put this inside of a box where our modifier is fill max size. 
and then we put this guy in here and we tell it to dot align uh, I think just alignment center and then we just go ahead and rerun things here we should have that box that loading symbol in the middle of our screen very very nice very simple we could come up with like a skeleton loading if you really wanted to or, or basically do whatever you want uh, you know in this at, at, at this point but the the circular prog progress indicator makes a lot of sense for me right now but I do foresee maybe we're gonna want to reuse that here so I'm gonna go ahead and just add in uh, I'm just gonna call it our loading now let's just call it our loading component right now and then we're simply just gonna take this cut it out and we're just gonna put it in that loading component which is called loading component and then we'll just simply pop all that in there very straightforward and then right now we can just call loading component which is very very simple right so you can kind of see how this um, the, the, this functional bit really starts to come together, right? Once you start pulling these components together, these different screens together, all that stuff, it becomes very reusable, very, very easy. You know, you could do the same thing for an error state in the situation. And then it also just becomes very simple for you to manipulate any of those states or components if you need to. Uh, so that looks really, really good to me, to be honest. And, you know, you can just fling this down. We have all these, um, you know, data pulled down from all these quotes pulled down from the uh, API and whatnot. So I'm feeling pretty good with where this is at. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching along. If you made it this far again, smash that like button to help me out. And uh, otherwise I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.